battling the urge to stare. It's ingrained in every single person. In fact, it doesn't matter if the man is married or single, it doesn't matter if he's young or old, all men get a sense of thrill and a sense of happiness looking at a beautiful woman's body and that is why our sharia ah commands us to lower our gaze. Now, what this translates into is that a man automatically, inherently detects the presence of beautiful women. He's subconsciously aware of their presence even if he doesn't show it. If they go into a restaurant, if they uh, walk in the, the lobby of a hotel, wherever they are, if somebody's dressed inappropriately, his head automatically, his eyes, no matter where they are, automatically will register that. Even if he's holding on to his wife's hand, one side of his brain is instantly registering all of these visuals that were coming in. As if that weren't bad enough for every man, these images are constantly popping into his head throughout the day, throughout the night, and yes, even nights, men dream about uh, women. Typically, a young teenager finds his mind is inevitably wandering over to the topic of women every second, third minute. Every single young man finds it difficult to concentrate for any period of time without thinking of women. Now, why am I telling all of this? And I, I can assure you, sisters, I know your first reaction. I've taught this class too many times. You will say, I don't believe you, Sheikh. I just don't believe you. Whereas every single brother will be like, well, isn't that obvious? Didn't you know that? And I understand, sisters, it's very awkward for you to hear this type of information. Now, the first reaction of sisters is, if it's so bad, why don't you lower your, great, your gaze? Well, frankly, these days, even if you lower the gaze in the Western world, you'll see stuff you shouldn't see. But that's besides the point. What I'm stressing here is that even if a good Muslim man lowers his gaze subconsciously, they are acutely aware of the presence of such women and they're battling temptations to look at them. And it is true to state that it's impossible even for the most righteous man to guard his gaze 100% of the time. I am uh, reminded of prophetic hadith and a statement of Ibn Abbas. In a prophetic hadith narrated by uh, Sunan Abu Dawood, our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, it is said that he was sitting outside and a lady passed by in the distance. And uh, he felt an urge and he went to his wife and he satisfied that urge and then he came out and he said, Verily, when a woman walks outside, shaitan makes her look more beautiful than she is. Shaitan beautifies her up. So when one of you sees something that agitates him or basically you know, increases the desire, let him satisfy that desire with his wife. For indeed, his wife has what the other woman has, meaning his wife is a woman and the other lady was a woman as well. This is our Prophet Muhammad I want you to think about that. Even he was a man. Ibn Abbas, the famous cousin of the Prophet wasallam. He commented on a verse that Allah says in the Quran that uh, Allah shall forgive all of the, uh, uh, that, excuse me, that Allah will punish all of the major sins, but as for the lamam, they are overlooked. What is the lamam? Means the minor sins. As for the lamam, as long as you're righteous, they will be uh, forgiven through the other good deeds. Ibn Abbas said, I know of no better illustration of what is a minor sin than the gaze of a man towards a woman. Now this is an, like an inevitable minor sin. Ibn Abbas is saying, I know of no better illustration when Allah says He shall punish the major sins and as for the minor sins, they will be forgiven if you're righteous. And this is what the ahadith tell us. If you're praying, if you're... Uh, and by the way, this isn't an open license to go stare, obviously. The point being though, nobody can win the battle 100%. Nobody can... And I can assure you sisters, no man living in the Western world, dare I say even the Eastern world, can a day go by except that one or two images or something of this nature goes into his gaze. So why am I saying all of this? It's very depressing for women to hear, isn't it? And frankly, I know for a fact because of the comments that I've gotten back that this knowledge depresses sisters. It makes them feel cheap. It gives them a sense of hopelessness. Sisters, I'm not teaching this to you to depress you. I'm teaching this to you to empower you for a better marriage, primarily for two reasons. Firstly, when you do catch your husband's eyes straying, of course, be irritated with him, show your pain and frustration, and also be a good Muslim wife to him, and uh, later on ask him what you can do to help him. But, don't ever interpret your husband's gazing